guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're going to be reviewing the all-new 2023 Nissan Sentra SR. And huge thanks to Red at Courtesy Nissan in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Red. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Sentra started off as Nissan's subcompact car in 1982, lasting four generations of the subcompact before moving up to a compact platform in 1999. Since 2007, actually, the EPA categorized the Sentra as a mid-size sedan thanks to its grown interior space, as well as the addition of the Versa, which is now Nissan's entry-level car. The eighth generation Sentra that you see here is released in 2020. For 2023, the Sentra offers an optional heated steering wheel, available dual zone automatic climate control, and a standard touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Up 100 bucks across the board and available in four different trim levels, all of them featuring the two liter inline four cylinder, cranking out 149 horsepower, 145 pound feet of torque, and made it to a CVT transmission. We start with the base S trim with the base price of 20,050 bucks. Everything mentioned before comes standard, plus Nissan Safety Shield 360 and forward collision warning. You can upgrade to the SV with a base price of 21,270 bucks. Now we get 16 inch alloy wheels, radar cruise control, smart access will push to start, a seven inch digital gauge cluster and an eight inch touchscreen. The SR trim that you see here starts a tick under 23,000 bucks. Now we get 18 inch alloy wheels, LED headlamps and daytime morning lights, a dark V-motion grille and sporty rear accents with sport cloth seats with orange contrast stitching. The top trim for the 2023 Sentra is the SR Midnight Edition with a base price of $23,635. Here we get full black 18-inch rims that you actually see here as an option, a full black V-Motion grille, black spoiler, and a black diffuser. But here we have the SR with a base price a tick under $23,000. What else we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, I apologize for the location of this video. We were right next to an airport. So bear with me when it comes to the noise. You can see the planes taking off pretty close to me. I'll catch back with you guys in one second. But as you mentioned, we have full LEDs for the headlights and an LED daytime running strip. LED fog light down below too. Dark accents for the V-Motion grille. It's still a chrome V-Motion grille. It's just darkly accented. If you want the full black V-Motion grille, you can go for the SR Midnight Edition, which is only 700 bucks above this trim we still have the classic nissan badge we haven't been updated to the new modern nissan badge not a big deal this vehicle not only looks extremely modern it also has a very friendly base price considering this is almost a top trim centra this white metallic paint is a 640 dollar option i believe but it is beautiful quite easily the nicest color on the centra especially with the black accents we have here for the sr and the black rims also speaking of black rims here we have these black 18 inch rims they're an option about a thousand bucks wrapped in honka kinergy gt all season tires dimensions being 215 45r18 so the 215 wide tires should be enough to put this near 150 horsepower to the ground and the 45 series sidewall although they, although they look pretty low profile should still be thick enough to keep this ride quality nice and soft i like how we don't have any plastic cladding pretty aggressive side skirt for the rocker panel area, I just kind of wish it was black contrasted, like the mirror caps, roof, B pillars, tents. I just wish it continued that black theme. Not a big deal though, we get blacked out mirrors with LED turn signals on them, blind spot monitoring. Not on the glass, but I'll show you where the blind spot monitoring is. It's right in the inside of the pillar. Chrome trim for the bottom part of the window trim. I wish that was blacked out, but the top portion is blacked out. As you mentioned, blacked out B pillar, C pillar, and full blacked out roof no panoramic moonroof no sunroof but the black roof still looks awesome with this white contrast smart access for the driver and the front passenger same rear wheel and tire setup the only difference is a smaller brake caliper Sentra badge sr right next to it i kind of wish those were blacked out body color spoiler if you want the blacked out spoiler you got to go for the midnight edition another plane taking off this is like a super jet look at the speed of that thing anyway i'll bear with it we have the full rear parking sensing specific exhaust tip for the Nissan Sentra SR, the lower trims do not get this style exhaust tip. But speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this two liter four cylinder and hear how she sounds. All 
right, guys, that was the sound of the two liter four cylinder sold by Nissan for the 2023 Sentra. And it sounds okay. It makes a decent amount of power at 149 horsepower, 145 pound feet of torque made it to a CVT transmission. You can expect this compact sedan to get the 60 between eight and eight and a half seconds. So definitely not the quickest, but for a daily driver that can get well over 30 MPGs, really just about as quick as you would need, especially considering the way this thing looks and the base price. We can shut this hood right up, walk around this 2023 Sentra one more time, check out the interior and see what we get with this sub $24,000 base price. So again, smart access for the driver and a front passenger. Opening up the door, we get soft touch up top, very soft touch too. Leatherette trim for the center, gushy soft leather at armrest. This is miles ahead quality wise compared to the Leaf SV Plus that we just reviewed on this channel. Auto one touch for the driver, power windows for the passenger, lock and unlock four-way adjustable mirrors, speaker, solid storage, you'll fit a six inch sub in there with no problem, and a 24 ounce water bottle to wash it down. Centra nameplate as we step inside. The seats, as you mentioned, are the sport cloth with orange contrast stitching. Got this like Alcantara material for the center portion. They're not power adjustable, but they're still adjustable for the recline, drop lift, and slide function down underneath the seat. We're taking a step inside, put on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. Uh, first thing we notice is the steering wheel. Nissan's been killing it with their steering wheels lately. I like the orange contrast stitching we get here for the SR. Solid 10 and two, nine and three fits great. Flat bottom, full aluminum for the frame of it. Nissan horn area is rubberized. The horn itself, not the most aggressive. People should still be getting out of your way. Volume and skip controls on the left side, infotainment adjustments on the right side, radar cruise control, voice commands, you can hang up and answer your phone calls. Speaking of the infotainment adjustments, right now we're looking at a digital speedo, the audio is turned off. We can go up and down, check out the speed, average speed with a blank screen beneath that. Fuel economy, don't take that seriously. This vehicle spent most of its life so far idling at the dealership. Tire pressure monitoring, trip computer, and beneath that we have our speed limit sign recognition. Moving over, our audio is currently turned off as we mentioned. Blank screen again. Forward collision alert, blind spot monitoring, all can be seen through your heads up. Beneath that, we can see everything that's in front of us once we actually take this car out on the road. Move over, we have our overall settings. You can see everything that could be potentially adjusted here on the center. My personal favorite to look at at all times would just be the digital speedo. The tack goes to about 6,400 RPM, cool temperature beneath that on the right side, 160. For the speedometer, I don't think this thing can hit 160. I'd be surprised if it hit 140, but it's still cool to get 160 mile an hour speedometer. The fuel level right beneath that, clock in the top left corner, temperature outside next to it with the fuel level down below the total mileage to the left. The stocks, very satisfying click, auto headlamps, we have our fog light controls right next to it. On the right side, no auto rain sensing wipers, but of course would not be expected for the vehicle in this price point. To the left, we have our eco mode. I'm sorry for the glare, the sun is pounding on this vehicle. I'll try to limit it as much as I possibly can, but there's really not much I can do. I've already cleaned off the lens. We have our interior brightness, trip reset, trunk release, and the latch for the tilt and telescope right here in the corner. Hopefully you get a good look at the pedals, gas cap release, parking brake, and our hood latch release in the bottom left corner. The dashboard has some faux leather stitch trim running all throughout it. Up top, we have hard plastic, but not a big deal. You wouldn't really be touching that area. Some faux carbon trim underneath it, and that faux leather trim continues all throughout the rest of the dashboard. As you mentioned, we get the upgraded eight inch touchscreen on everything above the SV, and this is of course above the SV. We can see between phone, audio connections, info, and the overall settings, and we get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You press this camera button, and it shows us the adjustments for the camera, not the actual camera itself. If you wanna check out the camera, put the car into reverse, and here you have it. Not the best resolution, but it does the job. We get guidance lines and trajectory, plus parking sensor. Anyway, charging, we have USB-A and USB-C port, aux port two with 12 volt right next to it. No wireless charging pad, but this would be a good area for one. Engine start stop in the corner. The gear sub controls the CVT transmission. We have drive and low gear. We'll try, I guess, both of them out. No reason to really check out low gear, but we'll check it out in this review. Carbon trim around the cup holders. You'll fit 24 ounce cups in there with no problem. Nice storage spot for a key. Gushy soft leather red armrest with the orange contrast stitching. Great area rest your arm. Storage space is massive. You're fitting a six pack of two liter bottles of soda, maybe not six, but you'll fit four, maybe five, two liter bottles of soda in this. Absolutely massive for a compact sedan. Definitely the largest in the segment. The glove box, if I call that the glove box, I apologize. The actual glove box is also massive. I apologize for the glare. There you go. You'll fit 25 license plates in there with no problem. Two pairs of shoes if you're under a size 10. Huge thumbs up to Nissan. The materials are rubberized hard plastic outside of it, but very premium 
above frameless rear view mirror it is an option but it's pretty well worth it option it comes equipped with something else too i'm not quite sure what but we'll look at it on the sticker the interior light is not led sunglass holder no moonroof here but the black roof looks absolutely awesome from the outside speaking of window sticker i said i'll show it to you guys see all the features that i may have missed on this 2023 nissan sentra 2.0 sr cvt you guys can pause take a look at all the standard features base price a tick under twenty three thousand bucks options 645 for the paint 260 for the floor mats 120 for the trunk package 440 for the electronics package that gives us the frameless mirror and the universal garage opening remote with the matte pocket lighting $80 for the door sill plates, $785 for the 18-inch black alloy wheels, $1,100 destination totals us out a tick over $26,000. Still a great value, fuel economy 32 combined, 28 in the city, 37 on the highway. That's about it though for the window sticker, that's about it for the front seat in general guys. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. You don't get smart access out rear, but really wouldn't be expected. Again, with a sub $25,000 base price up top, hard plastic to be expected. We get that leatherette trim with orange contrast stitching in the center, aluminum door handle, cushy soft armrest, two tiers of storage. You'll fit a six inch sub in there with no problem. A big gulp may actually fit in there. Very spacious cup holder, speaker, no nameplate for the back seat, but not a really big deal. The rear seats, the padding goes all the way out to the door frame. Still carrying along that orange contrast stitching with some decent bolstering for a back seat. Legroom, I'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have at least two, three inches of overall knee room, plenty of room for my head, about two, maybe three inches of headroom, USB-A port. I wish we had air vents back here. We have something blowing on from around the feet area under the seat. I just wish we had an actual air vent that blew directly into my face. Not a big deal though, again, with the price point, you wouldn't expect all these creature comforts. The features that we actually do get for the money are impressive. Map pocket behind the passenger seat. The center cubby doesn't get a latch, but you gotta jab your hand into it. You pull it down and very soft cloth, two cup holders, you'll fit 20, maybe 24 ounce bottles in there. The interior lights are not LED, wouldn't be expected since they weren't LED in the front. That's about it though for the back seat. Pretty consistent legroom wise with the rest of the segment. It's definitely larger than vehicles like the Mazda 3, but compared to like the Corolla, Honda Civic, very comparable when it comes to space. Styling wise though, I can confidently say this is probably the best looking com compact sedan that I have seen, at least compared to the Mazda 3, Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla, and vehicles like that. Of course, the premium manufacturers may have a little bit cooler compact sedans, but sub 25,000 bucks, this is probably the coolest. Cargo space underneath the Nissan badge is a button. We don't get covers for the hinges. So don't load anything up higher than that because it will crush your cargo, but this opening itself is massive. I can't imagine really anything not fitting in here. I wish my Camaro had an opening a quarter the size of this. Game changer when it's this large. The cargo space in general is large. Check that out. It goes out deep. I cannot reach back of the seat. I'm not even anywhere close to it. The wheel wall cutouts are huge. You may be able to fit a golf bag horizontally in here. You'll definitely fit it diagonally. You fold those rear seats down 60-40 split and I'd expect you to fit up to a 55, maybe a 60 inch seat back here. The floor is huge, it's just the shape of that cutout. Not the best when it comes to a TV, but when it comes to other stuff, I'm sure this is a very spacious cargo space, especially for a compact sedan, which not too long ago was categorized as a subcompact. That's about it though for the inside and outside of the 2023 Nissan Sentra SR. It looks absolutely awesome with the black accents, black roof. I wish the door handles were black. I wish the side skirts were black. If you want to go for the midnight edition, you get the full blacked out grill. But performance wise, the Sentras are just about all the same. And speaking of the performance, let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 Nissan Sentra SR. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions though, the steering feels fantastic. I don't know what Nissan's been doing with the steering lately. All their vehicles feel good. Nissan historically has always had good steering feel in most of their vehicles, same with Infiniti. But since they switched to electric steering racks, that just wasn't really the case. But here with this electric steering rack, it feels on center, direct, and very well weighted. Throttle response feels good, at least that was my first impression. Once you lean into the gas, you'll realize that you have less than 150 horsepower here. And speaking of that, on the gas. Okay. I mean, you look down, you're going quick. It just doesn't really get to that speed as quick as you necessarily would hope for. But compared to the segment, outside of like maybe two or three vehicles, like a 1.5 turbo Civic or a 2.5 or even 2.5 turbo Mazda 3, 
this is a competitive vehicle in the segment. Those two cars are definitely quicker, but they're also significantly more expensive. For the money, this is a more than quick enough vehicle. I believe the base Civic for 2023 starts at a base price higher than the top trim Nissan Sentra. So for a value, you really can't beat it. Road noise, we're on concrete pavement. We hear a little bit of road noise, but really not enough for me to complain. You check out the turning radius. We have an airport security officer. Hopefully he doesn't yell at me. I should be allowed to use it, but turning radius is pretty good. Body roll is extremely limited too. No complaints. Okay, thank you. Don't yell at me. Coming out on the S. Okay, yeah. The power is not bad. Definitely can't complain when it comes to power. It's just not what you buy this vehicle for. You buy it for literally every reason outside of power. It looks awesome. You're loaded with tech. The feel is very sporty. If you live in an area where you really don't plan on taking the car over like 50, 55 miles per hour, this is really all the power you could possibly need. Over the bumps will purposely run over this massive bump right here. Wow, 45 series sidewall. These tires, like from the outside, they look paper thin. Yes, the 45s, they're not paper thin. Once you go 40s or below, then you might really start to compromise the ride quality. But these 45s have such a good balance between good handling, good grip, and good ride quality that I'm just beyond impressed. The way the Nissan tuned the feel of this vehicle is so impressive. Check this out, high speed, throw it just as fast as you can. Oh my God, the body roll a little bit, but not much on the gas. <laughs> In the higher RPMs, it picks up well. It just takes a while with the CVT to actually get to the higher RPMs. I'm very impressed with the ride quality. I'm very impressed with the sound isolation, features, tech, and looks awesome. We could try it out one time in the low gear, just see what changes up. It'll probably just keep us in that first ratio on the gas. Yeah, same thing. Never mind. honestly, it's even worse because it doesn't let you go above 4,000 RPM. So that's a borderline useless transmission feature. I'll just leave it in drive for daily driving. We don't have a drive mode selector here, unfortunately. So what you see is just what you get, but what you get is still pretty good throwing it in way faster than we should. The brakes feel fantastic. Steering feels awesome. Whoop. It's a fun platform. The platform is great. I wish they gave us different engine options. Why is it still that the only engine available in this car is a two liter naturally aspirated motor? We have the 2.5 from the Altima you can put into the SR. We have the two liter turbo, of course, but in that tuning, probably too aggressive for this vehicle. You can detune that two liter turbo to like 220 horse, 250 torque, and this car would just be completely different and I guarantee people are gonna buy it it's the best looker in the segment the platform is very sporty feeling if we added a throw to your engine option I genuinely believe that this will be the best selling compact sedan across the board we'll try out a real-world turning radius as soon as we get the chance try out a acceleration run and I'll catch back with you all right guys real-world turning radius we can check it out it is sharp on the gas Yep, you look down, you're at speed. We can throw it in one more time, a little bit faster than we should, and then wrap things up. The brakes still feel great. The steering is so good. Woo! Nice, and it keeps the traction throughout the entire turn. I'm impressed. This is a fantastic platform. For the money, I'll tell you right now, you can't beat this in terms of value. Out the box, under 25,000 bucks for the base price. The way it looks, the way the interior feels, the way the fit and finish feels when you actually take it out on the road, it's just an unbeatable platform. If they offered us an upgraded engine choice for the SR or the SR Midnight Edition, or even give us like a SR Turbo or something at the top of the line with a base price, okay, approaching 30,000 bucks, what are you gonna say? Okay, 30,000 bucks, people will pay 30,000 bucks for a Sentra with over 200 horsepower, over 230 pound-feet of torque, that vehicle will sell. It'll be one of the sportiest vehicles in the platform, in the segment. And coming from somebody whose previous car was an Acura ILX, and I bought that car specifically because it was just the best performance under 30,000 bucks. Now that the ILX is no longer really performance oriented, the new Integra, it's not nearly as fun as the old ILX was. It's more of like a Honda Civic with more luxury. Now, since that's the case, I think Nissan should definitely throw a turbo in this car and it will steal a lot of customers from other manufacturers that are charging just absolutely ridiculous markups on their semi-sporty 
vehicles. But again, overall, if you're looking for a loaded compact sedan, loaded with features, looks incredible, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 Nissan Sentra SR. Check out the SV, check out the SR. Both of them are excellent, excellent values. The S for 20,000 bucks, you know, might as well spend the extra grand and go with the SV. You get so many more features for that grand. So I'd recommend checking out either the SV or SR. Either way, you can't go wrong. And a big thanks to Red at Courtesy Nissan in Tampa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Red. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. Let me know what the trim levels are, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.